standing with Taiwan in defiance of China. U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has ended her controversial visit to the self-ruled island. It's triggered an angry response from Beijing. But how will Taipei and Washington deal with the fallout? This is Inside Story. Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Kim Vanell. Nancy Pelosi has become the most senior U.S. politician to visit Taiwan in 25 years. The U.S. House Speaker spent less than a day on the South Ruled Island. But China, which claims Taiwan as part of its territory, called the trip a direct challenge to its sovereignty. Beijing had issued threats and warnings before Pelosi even touched down. But America's third most powerful politician was undeterred, saying Washington was committed to preserving Taiwan's democracy. China is responding with live-fire military drills and an import ban on Taiwanese products. We'll bring in our guests in a moment. But first, this report from Mohammed Jamjoon. For U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, a high-profile trip to Taiwan fraught with both complications and contradictions. America's third most powerful politician repeating Washington's commitment to protect democracy on the self-governed island while also respecting Beijing's so-called One China policy. Today, the world faces a choice between democracy and autocracy. America's determination to preserve democracy here in Taiwan and around the world remains ironclad. Taiwanese President Tsai Ing-wen, who gave Pelosi one of the highest civilian honors, promised to defend the island from Beijing's threats. Aggression against democratic Taiwan would have a tremendous impact on the security of the entire Indo-Pacific. Facing deliberately heightened military threats, Taiwan will not back down. We will firmly uphold our nation's sovereignty and continue to hold the line of defense for democracy. China, which considers Taiwan a part of its territory, has said it wants a peaceful reunification and views Pelosi's visit as a direct provocation. Taiwan sighing Wen and her ilk are clinging to the U.S. and turning their backs on national justice. These behaviors that go against the trend of times will not change the international consensus of one China and will not change the historic trend that Taiwan will inevitably return to the motherland. Those who play with fire will not come to a good end and those who offend China will be punished. Even during Pelosi's visit, China's reaction was fast and furious, suspending imports and exports of several goods to and from Taiwan, conducting joint air and sea live ammunition drills near Taiwan, and summoning the U.S. ambassador in Beijing. Pelosi's trip has come to an end, but with Chinese-American relations at such a low point, it's not clear yet what the long-term repercussions of this visit will be. Mohammed Jamjum for Inside Story. Well, let's look more closely at the U.S. relationship with Taiwan. Washington does not have formal diplomatic ties with the island, but maintains what it calls a policy of strategic ambiguity. It recognizes the Chinese government in Beijing, but not China's territorial claim to Taiwan. The U.S. does supply weapons to Taipei under its 1979 Taiwan Relations Act. The island is a major economic and technology partner to the U.S., it supplies more than half of the world's semiconductors. China sees Taiwan as a breakaway province that will eventually be united and hasn't ruled out using force. Let's bring in our guests in Taipei, Vincent Chow, former director of the political div division at the Taipei Economic and Cultural Representative Office in the U.S., and a former chief of staff to both the Taiwan National Security Council and foreign minister in Miami, June Teufel Dreyer, uh, professor of political science at the University of Miami and editor of the book Taiwan in the area of Tsai Ing-wen, Changes and Challenges, and in Beijing, Henry Huiyao Wang, uh, founder and president of the Center for China and Globalization and director of the Chinese People's Institute of Foreign Affairs. A very warm welcome to you all. Uh, I'd like to start with you, Henry Huiyao Wang in Beijing, with your thoughts on Nancy Pelosi's visit and the reaction that we've seen so far to that visit. 
Well, I think this is a really uh, a very uh, uh, bad move, actually, on the, on the part of uh, Nancy Pelosi because uh, she uh, came at, uh, you know, you know, the bilateral relation between China and U.S. already at the lowest point. Also, the, the world is facing pandemic and facing uh, Ukraine-Russian crisis, and energy crisis, and many other crises as well. So uh, we just had the President Xi and President Biden talking last week, and we also had the five uh, high-level uh, dialogue between senior officials between China and U.S. in the last two months. So we, 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 we don't want to see this uh, happen, actually, uh, uh, for her uh, Nancy Pelosi personal gains because she she has been branded, has been really uh, make her name, uh, uh, make her, uh, uh, you know, know that anti-China and uh, and also really uh, not not in, the, uh, you know, in good relations uh, with uh, with development of China-U.S. relations. So she's, she's, uh, she's really, I think, out of the political uh, motivation and for the domestic politics, I think, that uh, she's really, uh, uh, you know, went to Taiwan and uh, made this unprecedented move. So I think it's going to damage the, uh, not only the U.S.-China region, but also bring the serious uh, crisis to the cross street uh, of Taiwan. And uh, so this is going to be really breaking a lot of uh, uh, status quo. And uh, I think there's going to be a lot of uh, consequences in the uh, in the future that uh, that really go- we see the deterioration of these uh, relations. OK, I just want to pause you there and, and cross over to Taipei. Vincent Chow, what do you make of Nancy Pelosi's uh, reception in Taiwan? What does her visit mean for Taiwan? Well, just to start, um, Henry's point about um, anti-China, I think what he's really trying to say is she's been pro-democracy uh, basically her whole life. If anything, I think she's pro-China democracy and she was in Tiananmen. Um, She showed support for democracy both in China and in Taiwan in the past. And I think what it comes down to is this. Pelosi has a great track record when it comes to supporting human rights and democracy around the world. And her coming here to Taiwan is second nature to that. And when we look at it, there's no breaking of the status quo. Um, Newt Gingrich, as speaker, had come here in 1997. The Chinese did not dispatch fighter jets. They did not not announce live fire exercises, did not engage in economic sanctions. And so it becomes a bit disingenuous to say that, hey, I mean, China's not changed. Uh, China has changed. This is clearly within precedent. This has been done before. The reaction this time is far uh, above and beyond what we saw the last time around. And so clearly um, something within the CCP has changed. And it's difficult to imagine a scenario where countries around the region and the U.S. are not going to respond to that. Mm. Um, June Teufel Drea, is there anything that you would add to that? Yes, I, I uh, believe that the speaker from Beijing uh, errs when he said that this is upsetting the status quo. China has been upsetting the status quo in the Taiwan Strait for quite some time now, with a lot of provocative actions and talks about timetables for unification, which they persisted calling reunification even though Taiwan has never been part of the People's Republic of China. And I was appalled at the the effort to rewrite history here. Hua Chunying, who is the spokeswoman for the Chinese foreign ministry, saying that uh, Taiwan has always been a province of China. This is simply not true. It was declared a province in the Qing dynasty for less than 10 years, less than 10 years when Japan took it over and made it a colony of Japan. And, you know, lying about the facts um, is not going to help soothe the situation. And so I think Pelosi's visit was designed, as Vincent was saying, uh, to uh, as a show of support because against China's trying to change the status quo. Mm-hmm. What, just before we move on, um, Ms. Dreyo, what... Why does Taiwan matter so much to Nancy Pelosi and and to the U.S.? It matters for a number of reasons. Uh, One of the reasons Nancy Pelosi gave gave is that she has always been a strong supporter of democracy around the world, as has the United States in general, which um, immediately puts it against China, which is defending authoritarianism. But a second reason is strategic. Taiwan is strategically extremely important um, because it is the 
part of the first island chain of defense against aggression by the People's Liberation Army. And it is uh, Chinese military strategists have referred to Taiwan as the uh, buckle in the chain that keeps the People's Liberation Army bottled up uh, behind the first island chain and breaking, taking over Taiwan would mean getting access to a very important port, Kaohsiung, and also uh, an entryway. And they have specifically said an entryway to the Blue Pacific and Guam. And Guam is a US territory. And of course, halfway toward Hawaii. So that bothers okay. American strategic planners. Of course. Um I'd like to go back to Henry Huiyawang in Beijing. China obviously views this visit as a violation. What are the chances that you think China would go beyond um, live fire drills and actually take military action in Taiwan? Well, I think this is uh, really, uh, uh, really a break in the, uh, the pattern and the norm in the last, uh, you know, four or five decades. Actually, break the status quo. Because in the in the 1979, you know, the joint communique established by China and U.S., the joint communique stipulates, you know, of course, uh, uh, U.S. can maintain culture and commercial ties with Taiwan, but no official ties. That's very clear stated there. That's the prerequisite that, you know, established diplomatic ties with U.S., uh, between U.S. and China, and also for 181 countries around the world that China established diplomatic ties with. But this that is Taiwan not establishing is, uh, diplomatic is, ties. This is just a visit from the House Speaker. Well, this is uh, the no official contact. She's the third highest ranking official in the United States. She's official. Absolutely. She's uh, official. Uh, that's an official visit. That's, that's, uh, that's a fact. I mean, also, uh, Taiwan is uh, a part of China for, uh, for the long history. Uh, it's, uh, it's always a part of China. <laughs> it's the first time for me to hear that Taiwan is not part of China. That's, that's really nonsense. So, so I think that, uh, you know, she really uh, break that pattern. And uh, uh, that's why, I mean, China is always uh, uh, in response. I mean, China didn't provoke this. This is provoked by Nancy Pelosi and also the military exercise you mentioned about uh, uh, around the Taiwan uh, uh, would be really a response, uh, merely a response. But I have to, you know, that's, uh, there's anti-succession law. There's, there's, uh, uh, there's uh, independence that, uh, uh, you know, Taiwan authorities trying to seek. And then, and then, of course, the uh, U.S. is playing this Taiwan card. It's really uh, escalating the, the situation there. Sure. Really I, I just want to come back to my initial question. Do you think that China would actually take military action in Taiwan? Well, I think that uh, China's already, you know, I mean, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's a flight uh, over the uh, uh, middle uh, of the street uh, already last night. And also from the, from the third to seven, uh, there are going to be military actors around Taiwan. That's already planned and announced already. So, so the absolute, there's a res responses, there's an action uh, is taken there. That, that's very, very obvious. So, so that is also uh, uh, set a record there as well in responding to uh, this uh, uh, visit by Nancy Pelosi. Mm -hmm. um, Vincent Chow in Taipei, are everyday Taiwanese people uh, concerned about the rationing up of tensions, concerned about these live fire drills that are going to be happening? I think what's unfortunate is that um, provocations and military intimidation and coercion to a certain degree have become part and parcel of everyday life here in Taipei. And we've really seen um, a ramping up of tensions uh, from the PRC, military jets flying across our air defense identification zone, uh, economic course of actions, including most recently the banning of a few uh, food products and so forth. And so it's become really just um, a part of routine life. And, and, you know, that has its pitfalls on its own, but it's also an unfortunate consequence of the relationship or the lack of one we see today. But I, I do have to emphasize one point. If we take this idea of China, meaning the People's Republic of China, Taiwan has never been part of the PRC. And this is a historical fact. There's no there's never been a People's Liberation Army soldier here in Taiwan. Um, the PRC has never occupied Taiwan, has never set foot on Taiwan. And so it becomes very disingenuous to say that um, Taiwan has become, it ha is part of China for a very, very long time. And so that's partially what I want to respond to. But secondly, on the Taiwan Relations Act and, and the three communiques and all of that, nowhere within any of these documents does it mention that um, no speaker uh, can visit Taiwan, that no members of the legislative branch can visit Taiwan and or no members of the executive branch for that matter. This is just not part 
of what's written literature within the three communiques or the Town Relations Act or the six assurances for that matter. And so we have to be very clear eyed because we don't want to stumble into the next crisis based on hearsay. And we don't want to stumble into the next crisis based on word of mouth. So we have to be very clear of what's in the text and what's keeping with the status quo. And when we have a visit by a Speaker of the House that has clearly taken place 25 years ago, it becomes very, very difficult for us in 2022 to say that this is completely mm. against the status quo. It's okay. just not true. OK, I want to talk about um, US policy toward Taiwan, but uh, we just want to take a moment because President Joe Biden caused controversy back in May when he publicly stated that the US would defend Taiwan if Beijing were to attack. You didn't want to get involved in the Ukraine conflict militarily for obvious reasons. Are you willing to get involved militarily to defend Taiwan if it comes to that? Yes. You are? That's the commitment we made. That's the commitment we made. We are not. Look, here's the situation. We agree with a one China policy. We signed on to it and all the attendant agreements made from there. But the idea that that it can be taken by force, just taken by force, is just not is just not appropriate. It will dislocate the entire region, and be another action similar to what happened in in uh, in Ukraine. Now, the White House quickly uh, insisted that Washington's policy had not, in fact, changed. Uh, June Teufel Dreyer, has the Biden administration been confused about its policy, or was that just a gaffe on, on uh, the part of, of President Biden? Now, I, well, it may well have been a gaffe, but in fact, what China has been doing is insisting on its definition of a one China policy, which is that there is but one China and its capital is in Beijing and Taiwan is a part of that. That is not what the United States signed on to. The Shanghai communique said very clearly that the United States acknowledges that, uh, uh, that this is the Chinese view. It did not say it agreed with China, right? And so China has been trying to shift what the United States meant in the Shanghai communique. It has, in fact, been trying to shift the status quo for many years, and there is always going to be pushback. Uh, the United States public opinion is strongly supportive of Taiwan's ability to determine its own future. Uh, many of your top officials in Taiwan were educated with the, in the United States. And uh, it, is, it is very important to us not to let a, a, a democracy, which has been a good friend of the United States, succumb to the treatment that Beijing has meted out in Xinjiang, and in Hong Kong. OK, uh, I'd like to cross over to you, Henry Hui Wang. Is there, uh, do you have any response to that, what you just heard there? Well, I think that, uh, you know, uh, in the communique, they the, the were saying the, the people across the Taiwan Strait all recognize they are Chinese. I mean, there, there is one China. I mean, uh, also, we have these 92 consensus. Uh, there, there was even a meeting uh, between President Xi and the, and the former President Ma Yingju, uh, you know, the Taiwan uh, leaders then. So, uh, you know, definitely, uh, you know, before the uh, before the China even took over, there were millions of uh, mainland Chinese to uh, the Taiwan, and uh, also, you know, the, the the people in both places share the same culture, mm. same language, same food, and uh, same heritage. So, so I think it's uh, really. It's one China. Uh, uh, you know, you have a different interpretation. Probably on <laughs> okay, that, but, but this has you know. We don't want to get stuck on the sticking point um, of of history because obviously there, we have we have conflicting views here. I, I want to get into the analysis of this before I move on from you, Henry Hu Yawang. Is this? Do you think just a is this a bilateral spat between the U.S. and China, or what are the global implications of this? Do you think? Well, it has tremendous impact on the global. You know, China is the uh, uh, stabilizer of the global economy. China contributes over one third of the global GDP growth. China actually is the largest trading nation with 130 countries. And China, you know, even with the, the trade war going on, China export to the U.S. is, is those import export has has increased in the last several years. So, so you know, is is a, a stabilizer. We don't want to, you know, the world now is actually uh, we are experiencing the. Ukraine-Russian crisis, uh, and, and also that uh, uh, we have uh, this pandemic still going on. And, uh, you know, the world needs uh, 
both U.S. and China, they have more responsibility to see the world really going in the right direction. So we don't want to really be uh, uh, really plagued by this uh, uh, domestic politics that China become a scapegoat. And also we see that in the five high level talks and, the, and meetings between President Xi and President Biden, they all said one China policy. They don't want to have a cold war. They don't want to contain China. Okay. But let's do the do, do the deeds, not not just mm -hmm. the words. You know, that's really the problem. You okay. know, China, Taiwan is being played as a political car against China, okay. Now, okay. which is very unfortunate. Uh, Vincent Chow in Taipei, um, as we said earlier, uh, China has responded with an import ban on Taiwanese products. Is Taiwan able to withstand the economic price that it's now being forced to pay? Well, it's a it's a it's a far reaching relationship, the economic and trade relationship that we have with China. And it's it's an unfortunate fact, but it's true that a majority of trade does go through China and that um, China is a major center for Taiwanese businesses. And so that's an important part of Taiwan's economy. And so it's it's a bit disappointing when um, both China and Taiwan are members of the WTO when we see arbitrary uh, trade rules enforced on Taiwanese products without due process. When we see uh, trade being really played as a um, an economic card against um, this relationship, and and uh, and frankly, that's painful mm. for a lot of Taiwanese businesses, and and it's also something we don't hope to see. But you know, we do have to put it in this context. I mean, Taiwan is a industrial powerhouse, we're a high tech society, and you know, um, obviously, trade on agricultural is important, and agricultural provides a lot of jobs here in Taiwan. But it's 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 one aspect of a many much multifaceted relationship. And let me end on this note. Um, this trade dispute with China has really highlighted the need of why trips like Pelosi's are so important, because Taiwan does need economically diversified. And as a free market capitalist society, we need to provide incentives, uh, preferably through free trade agreements. And so this is something that we're looking very keenly at. And we do hope that we can make progress on a free trade agreement with the U.S. in the future. June Teufel Dreo, we are coming to the end of the program. But I want to ask you, Tsai Ing-wen has posited herself as a defender of Taiwan's uh, integrity. What kind of position are they in now? I think that this can only enhance her popularity. Now, she is term limited. She's in her second term as president. Um, but uh, I predict with some certainty that her popularity ratings, which were already pretty good, because as you know, Taiwan was a beacon for the world countries. Uh, in terms of dealing with COVID outbreak. And uh, so her popularity ratings were already very high. Uh, they are going to be higher as a result of this visit. Mm. Do you think there is international concern, um, June, that China-US tensions over Taiwan may divert attention from Ukraine internationally? Uh, that's a very interesting question because initially it was uh, bruited about that one of the reasons Xi Jinping was being so aggressive toward Taiwan, which, by the way, prompted Nancy Pelosi's visit, uh, is that uh, uh, it was losing uh, and it was, it, it was dispirited by what was happening in Ukraine. And it thought that the United States would be so distracted by what was happening in Ukraine that it wouldn't do anything to counteract the increasing Chinese aggression against Taiwan. And as this visit shows, that view was mistaken. All right. Uh, I think that is about all we have time for. There's obviously so much we could, more we could talk about, but for time, we will have to leave it there. Uh, a big thank you to all of our guests, Vincent Chow, Jun Teufel Drea, and Henry Huiao Wang. And thank you too for watching. You can see the program again anytime by visiting our website, aljazeera.com. And for further discussion, go to our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash AJ Inside Story. You can also join the conversation over on Twitter. We are at AJ Inside Story, or you can get me at Kim Vanell. From me, Kim, and our whole team here in Doha. Bye bye for now. <laughs>